Surprise! I'm coming at you not from my studio space. Eventually I'll do an actual honest-to-god tour of the studio space, but today is not that day. Today I wanted to show off some of the costume jewelry and some other costume details that I have made myself, mostly because I'm just really proud of these and I want to talk about them. First of all, can I just highlight? I'm gonna highlight my pants. Oh gosh, ow, that hurt. I just finished making these pants last night. I am so very jazzed with how they turned out. You might think that it is a skirt, but no, it's pants! Yes, I just finished these last night. I'm so sticking excited about these pants. The only drawback at the moam is that it only has the one pocket on this side. When I was stitching up this right hand side, I realized that I forgot to put a pants pocket in there and then I went, I'm not undoing the stitching. <laughs> so I would, I would rather have one pocket than none pockets. So still very pleased with how these pants came out. This was my first pair of pants that I made pretty much from scratch. Uh, there was another pair of pants that I had made once before, but they were a skirt conversion and they turned out well enough, but my booty was too powerful for them. So I ended up having to give them to Goodwill. So we are gonna do a little tour of this board here and I'm gonna, I'll bring you with me because there's a lot. We're gonna start up here in this corner with some of the clip-on earrings that I have made. I am so stinking pleased with these little chicken dangly earrings. I love them so much. There's also keys and, oh, I did not make these. These were a gift, but I love them. And then I made these other ones. Uh, also made these and these as well. I'll just go ahead and give you a tour of the entire board here. Got these at Pride. These two I got at Phantom Comics. Anytime that I wear these two, I have to pair them together. In my brain, Goku says this line. <laughs> the This one I got after doing a uh, zine workshop at a queer event in Pittsburgh. And then these I made, this I made. It's losing its stretch a little bit, so I'm gonna have to remake it. Made, 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 made. Got at Philadelphia. Got at Ice Tier Con. Got this elsewhere. Made, 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 made. Got this elsewhere. Gift. These rings I picked up at House of Dow in Toledo. Love them, love them to bits. I don't remember where I got this pin. I know I got this pin from somewhere. This was a gift from my buddy Carlos. He's a regular viewer on my live streams. Shout out to the Los. This was a gift from an old college buddy of mine whose major was in jewelry making. Thank you, Lauren. These were the dog tags from Pappy that I got before the estate sale. Necklace from a Grandma Rini got before the estate sale. Got this at, I want to say River City Comic Con, but it's been a number of years, so I don't recall. This was a gift. This is from my buddy Junior Vigarito, creator of Growing Up Gerardo. Highly recommend that you check out their stuff. Same with this little button. Junior, Junior. This was a gift. Overly sarcastic pin. Picked this up at, I want to say West Virginia Comic Con. Um, love it to bits. And then, the, whoops, I'll get that. These two... And these I picked up at Toledo Pride. This was a gift, 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 because I have a friend who participates in a lot of zine projects. Oh, can I get the glare to stop? Okay. I designed this one and I kept one just for myself. Hello, my name is Business Raptor. I thought I told you never to call me here. This was from the Free Pile at Small Press Expo. I don't know who drew, who drew this. If you're watching this, tag yourself in the comments. I made these. They were originally jangle earrings, but I converted them into clip-ons because I wanted them. I did not make the actual lightning bolt part, but I made them into clip-ons because I wanted to wear them and I don't have my ears pierced. Dinosaur was a gift. This was from a Kickstarter that I backed. I'll get into that in a second. Made this necklace. I did not make the actual leaf beads or feather beads myself, but I assembled the necklace part. I have matching earrings. Oh, I bet I bet they're in the... I have a plastic container that has a bunch of uh, clip-on earrings. 
This was a gift, or no, this was a trade. I traded a couple of zines with someone. Whoop. I traded a couple of zines with someone to get this. This is an actual bone. I asked them to make sure that it got bleached, and they did bleach it, so yes. I want to say it's a deer bone, but I don't quote me on that. Lock of hair when I had hair. Got this at Michael's. I'm thinking about taking the crow head off and using the chain for another project because I have a Legend of Zelda pendant that needs a chain. This was a gift. This was a gift. Do not ask me why he has a smiley face painted on him. I have no idea. He just came that way. We got Serret and Nidus, two of my favorite characters from EXU Calamity. A uh, ring from House of Dao. I designed this pin. You are awesome, because of course you are. A uh, gift, gift. Uh, I want to say this was a gift. Um, I can't recall. I did get this a while ago, but I don't remember where. Gift, gift, Kickstarter. Don't remember where I got this anymore. This was a gift from somebody at Yumicon. This was a gift from one of my former players, Dana. Shout out to Dana. I've had this for years and I don't remember where I got this anymore, but I love it. This was a gift from my older sibling. Uh, the ring is my mom's old engagement ring. And this is a best friend ring that I share with my buddy, Chloe. I'm pretty sure she has the other half, but um, if nothing else, I could probably put the Zelda pendant on this thing and just move these over to the other dog tag chain that I have. I don't know. I'm still thinking about that. Yeah, that's that's the board. Um, oh, oh, there's also this little guy over here. I almost forgot about him. Uh, I got this from a vendor at Ice Tier Con. These are the gender queer colors. We also have this little guy right here. I got him, I'm pretty sure, at Yumicon. Don't quote me on that, though. But I love him all the same. He's holding a little orb. Is he a little orb that he's holding? He's so cute. I love his little curly tail and his little face. My goodness. SPX Exhibitor Badge. And, yeah, there's a bunch of earrings that I made up in the corner. Again, I don't have my ears pierced. The last time that I had my ears pierced, I had, like, an allergic reaction. So I just don't have my ears pierced anymore. Okay, these next bits, I'm just going to show them off rather than have them on my body, just so you know that I made these, but I don't feel like changing into them. This here is my billowy pirate shirt. If you met me at GalaxyCon 2022, you saw me wear this. Um, this, I made it out of a bed sheet. And yes, you can see the stitching on it. Do I care that you can see the stitching on it? No, I feel like it lends it a homemade piratey feel to it. Because, fun story, I have a grandpa who was in the Navy in World War II, and he talked about his Navy buddies making stuff out of scrap fabric all the time. So I feel like there's a little bit of like a callback to the nautical tendency to work with the resources that you have in making this puffy pirate shirt. Now, it's not pleated or anything. I feel like pirates would not know how to pleat. Uh, we also have... I originally made this as a skirt. This was a bottom portion of a t-shirt that I added some lacing onto the sides. And it does work as a mini skirt, but you can also have this double as a top pretty easily. I also have this. I've hardly worn this because a, when I bend over in this, you can see my underpants. No, I am not demonstrating that. The other thing about it is that this does not have any pockets. If I could redo this project all over again, I would add at least one pocket. But there's also a little part of me that's like, maybe I don't want to. Maybe I can just make this into booty shorts. Because I know how to do skirt into pants conversions. And that's not hard. So that's a thought. I have yet to decide what I'm going to do with this. Mooney was just sitting on this. He's such a good studio helper. So we have this patchwork skirt. I actually had to pull this out of my dirty hamper because I was wearing this earlier this week. This thing is so comfy. I cannot get over how comfy this is. This took a while. This took a while to make. But... It's made from all kinds of scrap t-shirt fabrics. Some of the crazier patterns are actually old socks. 
that I repurposed for this skirt. And that was my wrist. It has pockets. Look at this. It has pockets. I added pockets when I made this. I'm so glad that I did. When I get the chance to, I wear this every time that I go to the craft store. It's a good statement piece. This I will demonstrate so that you know what this is. I was inspired to make this after finding a gray version of this amongst my grandparents' stuff. And I was like, well, this is a handy mask for the cold Toledo winters. So I made a little rainbow version of this after making the rainbow sweater, which I will show you in a minute. With that, let's get into the shirts and sweaters. Coming at you at a new angle with a better view of the bookcase. Oh, it's mostly going to be blocked off by my big melon head as I dig through the closet. A couple caveats about the shirts that I'm about to show off. I am not counting tank tops that were converted from t-shirts because one, they're easy. Two, they're easy. <laughs> so we're not going to show off the uh, t-shirt conversions into tank tops. Instead, what I'm going to do is show you some other stuff. We'll get into those. This was the first ever button-up shirt that I sewed. Found a pattern that used a lot of just squares. <laughs> it came from a book that was just like, here's what you can make with squares. And I was like, dope. Um, the drawback with this shirt is that it is small. It came out real small. I only had so much fabric to work with with this thing. So I leave this kind of like a, a, a short cardigan kind of thing because if I try to add buttons to it, my body is too powerful for it. So I cannot wear this as a intended button-up shirt. But it does make for a nice layering statement. I also just love the wacky patterns. Now this I do want to show off because this was a long sleeve conversion and then I made it into a short sleeve. So a couple things about this one. This was a hand-me-down from my grandpa. The shirt is so comfy. I wish I could convey to you how soft this fabric is. Yeah, I'm not finding a tag. Wow, the shirt is so old that it lost its tag. I want to say that it's a cotton blend, but it does feel nice. It feels really nice. It's not, it's not silk level, but it is loose and cozy, and I love it for that. When I did the repairs, I had to fix the collar area through here because there was a big old hole, so I just went in there with an invisible stitch and stitched it up. Uh, since the color is down most of the time, you cannot tell that it's like a little poofy on the back, but it's fine. And then I cut the sleeves into short sleeves because the actual like, it used to go all the way down to the wrist like a proper button up shirt, but there were a lot of holes <laughs> towards the wrist, so I ended up cutting that off. The cuffs actually, actually saved the wrist cuffs. These, I'm going to make them into actual, like, wrist cuffs, like so. The demonstration purposes will be better if I'm wearing a t-shirt, but, you know, this, I feel like, is an interesting statement piece, particularly if you decorate it with uh, badges and buttons, which is kind of what I want to do. I like it. It's repurposing. Very punk. Much edge. This was a long sleeve t-shirt conversion into a vest, mostly because I didn't really like how the long sleeves sat on my arms, but I really liked the pattern on this and I wanted to keep it. So I just cut the sleeves off, made it into a vest instead. Now this one was a long sleeve button up shirt. I had to do a lot of surgery on this. I had to remove the old collar, had to cut the sleeves off because there were a lot of holes. I cannot understate how many holes the sleeves had. And then I actually went in and I trimmed the sides and so that it would fit my curves a little bit better because the previous cut of this was very, very boxy. This was another shirt that I had inherited from my grandpa. And I was like, I'm just gonna make this a little more, a little more vest-like. Um, I also cut in through here to give more of a V-shape. I like how this turned out, ultimately, very punk. Probably gonna put some patches on this thing. We will see. This, I'm thinking about adding a actual honest to goodness like hoodie pocket onto the front of it. That is not going to be a hard addition to add on there, but 
this was a t-shirt and I cut the sleeves off and added a hood because I wanted some more unique layering possibilities and I did make the stitching very obvious on this one because I wanted the stitching to be obvious on this one. Very, very punk. I got this shirt when I got accepted into the Ohio Governor's Youth Art Exhibition, so I wanted to keep the shirt to commemorate it, but I wanted to do something with the t-shirt, <laughs> so that's what I did with this. I knitted this! I knit so many things, I have a problem. This I used some leftover yarn from another sweater, which you'll see in a second, but I wanted to make a sweater vest because I am that nerd. I wanted a sweater vest, so I made the front and back panels and did it that way. And does it matter that the shoulders are two different colors? No, it does not because it was one of those color changing yarns like the longer that you worked on it, the colors would change. It was just longer transitions. Like the intent was to work with color blocks. Now this is really big stitching. Also the other noteworthy thing about it is that because when you're making sweater vests and sweaters, you tend to work back panel first, then front, then sleeves if you're working it with a sweater. So I made the back panel first and I did this pattern of ribbing and then I completely forgot that I did this pattern of ribbing. So when I worked on the front, I did the usual knit, purl, knit, purl, rather than knit, knit, purl, purl. <laughs> so two different ribbings. Oops. It's fine. It was my first knitted sweater vest. You're allowed to make mistakes. Okay. This dress I do want to rework. I had come across a sewing pattern online that advocated for just taking a tank top and then taking spare fabric from wherever you have, doubling it up and then sewing it onto the bottom of the tank top. And I don't like how this looks. I also don't like doubling up the fabric because that just adds extra weight onto that top fabric garment piece. I don't like it. So I'm thinking about just ripping the stitching out and then using this skull fabric for something else. I don't know what yet, but I do want to use it for something else. Will I keep the tank top part? Probably not. It would kind of turn into a halter top if I cut it at this point, but I do like the embroidery that I put on the edges. Well, I am working on a patchwork shirt, so maybe I'll just use it for patchwork stuff. Who knows? Okay, that is it for the t-shirts, etc. Now to show you the sweaters. I'm so very proud of these sweaters. I have not one, not two, but three sweaters that I have knit. I have a problem. Let's talk about this first one. This took me forever. This took so many sit downs with a critical role playing in the background while I worked on this thing because as it turns out, the gauge for this was Tiny, so tiny compared to the recommendation of the pattern. Um, Cause I found a pattern online for a super simple sweater. And I was like, cool, something kind of mindless. This won't take it, this won't take very long and I'll make it a rainbow. And then it took forever. But I do really like how this turned out. This is so nice. Now the thing of this first sweater is that the arms turned out long and the torso came out short. So this is a good layering sweater, or at least a good house sweater. I don't tend to wear this out and about very much unless I layer it with other stuff. Second sweater, I lengthened the torso. I learned my lesson from the first one, but the armpits turned out a little too tight. So I just made do. Again, this is a good layering sweater. This is really, really cozy. This was made with the same yarn that I made the sweater vest out of. Are you done scratching, sir? Oh no, you don't. Come over here. Clearly you want to be on camera. I found a noodle in my closet. He decided to call attention to himself by scratching. Do you want to say something to the, to the camera, little man? Huh? Do you want to say something, sir? Demands attention everywhere, everywhere he goes. That was this sweater. This was made with the same yarn as the sweater vest. The remnant yarn from making this went into the sweater vest. Oh, this is the most recent sweater that I finished. Uh, my roommate Alex and I call this the 
thanks Patrick's Day sweater. I wanted to do some really subtle patterning along the shirt and you probably can't see it but the subtle patterning is that I wanted to do the stitching as such that it looked like four leaf clovers. It did not turn out that way I don't think. So lesson learned in that regard but there's patterning here and patterning on this sleeve my neighbors started talking. So yeah we got this sweater here. This is the biggest sweater I have ever knitted. I went into this with the goal of I want a big chonky oversized sweater. Goal achieved. It's it's pretty heavy. I have to put this on like a heavy duty hanger. Otherwise it's it's liable to bend and snap the poor babies. I almost forgot to highlight this. Oops. I also have this which was a skirt but I converted it into a type of poncho. I forgot that I keep my coats on the same section of the closet as I keep my sweaters. So yeah I turned this into a kind of like poncho deal. Wow. Uh, I mean it's not it's not perfect. Um, I could probably use one of my pins or something to button this up or I could go back in and uh, re-sew this or figure out something else to do with this but you know it's good for layering at least so there is that. I don't know we might reuse this fabric for a different project we will see. Oh I have another thing that I should show off. I also knitted these socks out of the same rainbow fabric that I used for the sweater and the neck scarf. I had enough rainbow yarn because it was my first sweater project and I bought an excessive amount of yarn because <laughs> I didn't know how much I would need. It turns out I had enough to make this, the sweater, the neck scarf, a hat, which I have the hat. Hold on. There you are. Rainbow hat. Look at this. It's so cute. Rainbow hat. Oh, I forgot that I made another hat. Hold on. I have a problem. I also forgot that I, oh dang, okay. Hold on. I also forgot that I made two bikini tops and a halter bralette. Um, but I made this out of an old t-shirt because I was not going to be wearing this in any other context because this was a work uniform. So I just made it into a halter. Would I knit more socks? Possibly. I've already knit. This is the second pair that I have ever knitted. Um, I also just like how they're mismatched. The first pair of socks I ever knitted actually got holes in them because I wore them so much, so I use them as dust rags now. Let me see if I can find those. Hey, I found one. Can't find its partner. That's fine. Oh. This was one of the first socks that I ever knitted. I had a special sock loom that I made these on. Um, I have since rehomed it because as it turns out, I vastly prefer knitting socks with double-ended needles. <laughs> the sock loom was just, it was hell on my wrist. So I went double-pointed needles and have not turned back since then. So this is one of the socks. This is not the one that has a hole in it, but it does have a edge that's kind of fraying a little bit. Like if I wore it again, it would get a hole. So I just made it into a, a dust rag. Moon Boy is being so helpful. Yep. Talking about you. Oh, I forgot something. How can I forget this bad boy? Dragon scale scarf. Ugh. It's so heckin' long. I don't know if I can convey how long this is. I only have so much space in here. Look at this. I love it. I love it. This I crocheted throughout the entirety of watching Wolf's Rain on DVD that I borrowed from a friend of mine. It took so much yarn. This pattern is a yarn hog. Would I make a sweater out of this? Absolutely not. It would be cool as heck to see a sweater made with this. Now in the crochet community this is called the crocodile stitch but I prefer calling it the dragon scale stitch because uh, it looks like dragon scales to me. As dope as it would be to see an entire sweater in this pattern. It would require so much yarn. I think I went through four skeins just to make this. It usually takes four skeins to make a whole sweater. So like, mm, yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, 
but I love this. I love how this turned out. I don't get to wear it half as much as I would like to, but it is so cozy and I love it so much. Oh, really one other thing. Um, I have tried crocheting a halter top like with the green shirt, but I don't like how the edges turned out and I don't like how the uh this turned out I was trying to do that because when I saw this I was like mm, I don't like it so I think I'm just gonna frog this and use the gar yarn for something else that's pretty much it as far as just the crafting and jewelry and costuming goes I've made a bunch of other stuff but as far as like the costume detailing goes and jewelry etc hold on i almost forgot when i was mentioning the uh container that i kept other clip-on earrings i was talking about this i also made these book earrings i love them and i don't get to wear them nearly as much as i would like to so i'm gonna have to change that and just talking about these earlier oh ooh, this one's upside down the feather earrings stop wiggling the feather earrings I do love how they turned out. They pair really well with the feather necklace that I have. I have another pair of earrings in here that I made, but I'm going to I'm going to work on them again cuz I don't like how the clasps turned out. I wanted to highlight some of the stuff that I've already made so that I can get you hype for bringing you on the journey for the next batch of stuff I'm going to make cuz I want to bring you on a journey as I make more stuff. I have a lot of stuff in mind get to that when we get to that. If you like this, do all the YouTube stuff, be sure to subscribe to stay tuned for the crafting journey and the making journey. I want to take you along with me while I make new stuff this year. Thank you all so much for watching. You are awesome.